The approval rating of Congress has sunk to its lowest level ever. It's, it's lower than cockroaches and polygamy. I mean, this is really a crisis in American politics. But the failure is really a meta-failure. It's not a failure of individual decisions. It's a failure of the system as a whole. I mean, we've always had conflicts. We've always had systems in place, though, that would correct the problems and avoid failures. But in our current political system, rather than identifying, avoiding, and correcting social problems, we're misidentifying, causing, and even compounding them. And it's infuriating, and that's what causes the approval rating to be so low. But before we can really address that, we have to understand the causes, because when meta-failure hits any system, the consequences can be fatal. It's kind of like in your body. Your body has DNA repair systems and immune systems and ways to correct problems. But when those fail, you die unless dramatic action is taken. So what's causing this meta-failure in American politics and how can we stop it? Well, we can start by recognizing the foundation of our political system is dispersed authority with checks and balances on power. But over the last hundred years, we've concentrated or centralized political power in the hands of fewer and fewer people and doubled the percentage of government spending that occurs at the state and federal level, while the local share of government spending has fallen from 62% to 25%. At the same time, elected representatives at both the state and federal levels have become less and less accountable. Despite low voter satisfaction with Congress, incumbents are re-elected more frequently than ever. More than 95% of House incumbents win their primaries. More than 60% of them don't even have an opponent, and only 10% of the people in their district vote in a primary. And then they cruise to re-election in one-party districts. Over the past 100 years, the average tenure of the House has increased fivefold, from two years to more than 10 years. Today, an incumbent in the House is about as likely to die in office as to lose a primary election. Consequently, people have become more and more alienated from the political system. Now, as problems arise, we look for fixes, but those fixes are being driven by the center. They're not being driven at the local level. Our political discussions are dominated by the question of what must be done, which is a policy question, rather than the more fundamental question of who should decide, which is a governance question. So we're operating under a broken paradigm. Fights are framed as Republicans versus Democrats or conservative versus progressive, good versus evil, us versus them. And because we've centralized these decisions, the fight is winner take all for the entire country, leaving special interests and lobbyists to determine the outcome. But what we decide is not as important as who decides it. Think of it this way. We should not let CEOs set their own pay, even if they decide to pay themselves a reasonable amount of money. I mean, the what might be right, but the who decides is wrong. Now, they may choose a good policy. They may choose to pay themselves an appropriate amount of money. Once CEOs have the power to set their own pay, it's only a matter of time until they start paying themselves too much. The same philosophy applies to how we should handle health care regulation, education, campaign contributions, a whole host of issues. A good policy established under a bad governance system will always morph into a bad policy. So to combat this political meta-failure that we're experiencing, we need to change the way we think about politics. We need to think in terms of subsidiarity, which means that a decision is made at the smallest, lowest, or least centralized authority capable of addressing that matter effectively. Subsidiarity, together with competition, which we'll discuss later, enhances local control, political accountability, and citizen engagement. It places decisions about the commons back where they belong, closer to the people whose lives they impact. So, whether we're talking about governments, corporations, or any other large-scale human organization, subsidiarity is the answer to good governance.